We're back at Snake Discovery after doing the build off yesterday and today I'm gonna find out if Snake Discovery is worth the hype because I don't like wasting my time at places that are overrated. I like hanging out at appropriately rated establishments. Welcome to not the green room, but Snake Discovery. Today, I'm gonna basically tour the reptile zoo and see if I can find some animals that I wanna put on my wish list while finding out if snake discovery is overrated. Hi folks, Future Bob here. As you may know, I edit these videos and wear fancy hats from the future. Just so you know, this video is not my coverage of the build-off. If you wanna see that, that video is right up there. But I hope you enjoy this fun video. It's got a ton of animals and a lot of footage from a couple of cameras. It's, it's a nightmare for me to edit. As you may know, Kent didn't bring his camera and he ended up standing outside all day. So as penance for being completely useless and making me pay his trip to be here, I'm making him do a commercial for Adoption Island. It'd be a lot easier for me to do a commercial for like Radio Shack and less terrifying. Well, Radio Shack is out of business. Well, maybe that's your opinion. Kent, they went bankrupt like eight years ago. You'd be surprised. I don't think I would. Can we get back to your commercial for Adoption Island, please? I don't have a script. Just say whatever you want, but make it sound good. Yeah, that's smart. Shoot a commercial with absolutely zero plan. That should work. While Kent is filming his commercial, let's go look at some animals. Are you adopted and also you want a lizard to live at your house? What? Oh, that's not what it is? My mistake, I, I didn't know. Do you need a new pet, but a dog or cat or fish won't do the trick because you're totally freaking crazy? That sounded negative, didn't it? I'm trying, I'm sorry, I'm trying. Hi, my name is Kent and this is the place where all the snakes and lizards are. They're absolutely terrifying. This is definitely a snake on my wish list. If we're talking about wish list animals, the first snake that got me interested in reptiles at all was either an emerald tree boa or a green tree python because they both look like this and they both sit on a branch like this. This species is definitely on my list. This is an eastern indigo and I will have one at some point. Here's what I've always heard about them though is that they're super messy and that's one reason that I haven't gotten one yet is because I don't know that I want a super messy snake that just explodes all over everywhere. But I talked to a breeder recently that told me that they're actually not that messy. It's just that most people overfeed them. What do you think about that? Those of you that have Eastern Indigos, is that true? I tend to think maybe it's not, but uh, I don't know. But look at this snake. They're absolutely beautiful. A lot of people say that they're really highly intelligent too. Emily, what do you think about that? They're dumb as rocks. They're not bright <laughs> snakes. They are not smart snakes at all. <laughs> all right. So, so look, there's uh, clearly some differing opinions about uh, the brain side and the tail side of these snakes. So maybe I'll get one at some point and we'll find out. Here's the thing about monitor lizards. Almost all of them, except for the very small ones, can be extremely dangerous. They are a lot to take care of and a huge responsibility, but I want them all. Look at him. How could him, her? Look at this one. Do you want a snake like this living in your bedroom? What the heck is wrong with you? Hi, I'm Kent, spokesmodel for Adoption Island. Do you want a new pet, but also want to put your life in danger? Try a bearded dragon. with Jessica, the, the, the false water cobra. Oh, look, she's going through my beard. Super strong, active, seems about on the level of a retic as far as uh, interactivity, intelligence, interactivity. They're, they're, they're built so much like indigos. 
that it's really I mean like I when I first started loving them it was like this is this looks like it has a head structure the scalation and it feels like an indigo and it's a giant colubrid snake but I could actually afford one yeah and then later on I discovered well I like the way they look a little bit better they're bigger than indigos <laughs> and they they don't they don't make mud out of everything they eat and they don't eat snakes this is this is the perfect snake this is inky the black-headed python emily how old is inky inky is around five if i remember correctly okay so five-year-old blackhead that that tracks because she's quite a bit bigger than maya and uh She's she's a good girl. She, she, she is well, super jumpy. She, yeah, right? she is. She's calmed down considerably since living in our zoo for the past couple of years. Like yeah. just the exposure and people walking by. She's gotten used to them quite a bit. Right. But and, and thankfully she's still you know a great eater, which tells us she's not overly stressed in the zoo. Right. Right. So she seems to be doing really well. <laughs> but you know what's cool about black-headed pythons? I bet she's never bitten. She or hasn't. Has she? She's struck, but she's never made contact. So now I wonder if it's all just a bluff. It, it is. It's, they you blood think? strike. Yeah. Okay. So okay. And, and what I mean, I mean, Maya has bitten me, but in a food response. But what I mean by bitten is uh, defensive strike. Okay. Um, yeah. They. T I heard. I had heard that they bluff strike, and Maya has never been uncomfortable with like she's never been defensive at all so I've never seen a bluff strike okay so that's what I was wondering is if that's that's what she does a lot then yeah. is the the bluff strikes yeah, she's a big girl she's great yeah now we need to keep our eyes open for a male though so we can hopefully breed them I do I'm in the same boat yeah, right, okay I'm, so we both need a male yeah if I find a good male that I don't pick up I'll let you know okay okay you know. sounds good yeah all right Inky I'm, I'll let you go back if you want to go back I get it Aki monitor. This is an adult. I believe I'm pretty sure that's about as big as they get. This one would be on my wish list. I mean, I want all the monitor lizards, but this is one that I could see myself actually having. So this is sushi, a mainland reticulated python. Now, look at the size. A very big snake, but if you watch snake channels, I bet you've seen a reticulated python way bigger than this. And you might think, oh, this is just a juvenile and she'll get way bigger. She's actually in her 20s and she's a retired breeder. So reticulated pythons do get much bigger. It just depends on how you feed them. They're about this big or smaller in the wild though. But uh, I say this because she's still a massive snake. And this is why I keep super dwarf reticulated pythons. I don't want to be responsible for a snake this big. I love them. I love visiting them. I think they're fascinating, but I don't need a giant snake. I don't have a room this big to keep a giant snake. But she's awesome. She doesn't, she's not happy with being touched. I'm okay with that. When that snake pees, they have to shut down the store and get everybody out. People come in with hazmat suits to clean it up. I'm not sure if that's true, but I'm guessing. I'm guessing it's true. It's time for another mid-video Patreon credit scroll. And as you can see, this has become the Patreon fence. We did this last time and it seemed to work. Uh, we just scroll along the fence here. These are the people who support the channel and help me do cool things like go to Snake Discovery. Look at all these names. Really appreciate these guys. And I also appreciate the channel sponsors, Black Box Cages, Lane Labs, and Great Family Snakes. feel about being eaten in your sleep and by the way word of warning the name snake discovery is not a joke so if you're a crazy person come on by did we get it great i'm not trying to brag you guys but i have emily's keys so we basically have the run of the place let's go find a boega yeah. there's two in there Andrew, you know. oh is there two yeah well, just like walk where heads are <laughs> there's one in the log and probably one squeezed out the side somewhere i'll find them Okay, so we have mangrove snakes in here. Great. What, what did you take out? They're so cool. I'm going to see if I can get them out. They are venomous, but they're not deadly. So, I just want to see if I can figure out where a head is. They're going to probably go out the other way. Hi, buddy. I see a head. There's a head right in there. 
Are you gonna come out? Oh, you're not. You're just on the head. Now I gotta head here. So we do have them both in here. Technically, I'm handling two mangrove snakes at the same time. This is not the scenario that I wanted when I got into this cage. I was really hoping that I could just get one out. But I'm not gonna fight a mangrove snake if they wanna be in a log. I think it's fine. They're absolutely beautiful. They're definitely on my list. But like most of these snakes on my list, not anytime soon. But the good news is, I still have Emily's keys. So let's see what else we can get out. I cannot believe how big Jupiter's head is. So I'm gonna try to find Jupiter. He is the biggest boa imperador I've ever seen. I would, if I saw this snake, I would think it's a boa constrictor, but it's not, it's an imperador. Let's see if I can get him out. Oh my gosh. Whoa, that is big. Well, Emily just told me that this is a 30 year old snake. And this is another great example of the fact that snakes grow their entire life. So this snake probably was kind of small for its first 10 years or so. But then it kept eating and kept getting bigger because they don't stop growing. They do slow down, but they don't stop. So now we have a giant boa imperator. Now I will say that my boa imperator is a dwarf locality. So I don't expect him to get this big, hopefully. I mean, if that wasn't the weight of that. Oh my gosh! By the way, I still have Emily's keys. Oh my gosh! She's turning the year Oh, I'm just kidding. This is Justin Timber Snake, the timber rattlesnake. And rattlesnakes are one of my favorite species. I won't ever have one though because I don't have any reason to. And it is legal to keep a rattlesnake in California. You can have one as long as it's a local variety. You're not bringing one in. Uh, but I don't want to do that because I, I, there's no reason for me to keep a venomous animal that is deadly. I don't mind a mildly venomous animal, but I don't want to have something that could kill somebody. So uh, rattlesnake would not be the most responsible thing for me to keep, even though I love them. I haven't asked about these tegus. I have no idea uh, what their temperament is, but we're going to find out. <laughs> As it turns out, this tegu seems very handleable. And look at how beautiful. So this is um, albino of some sort. What are we looking at here? Does it even say? Uh, it's a black and red. Oh, Emily's right. Albino. <laughs> say it again. Uh, he is a. What we were told anyway is he is a black and red tegu, like hybrid, and an albino on top of it. Wow. So, so black and red albino. Uh, or sorry, black and, or sorry, blue tegu, red tegu, hybrid, and albino. I wow. think he might just be an albino blue. So this is my favorite dog species, and um, I like golden retrievers, but I like tegus a little bit better. Hi there. Hi there, buddy. You happy right there? I really want one. If I had the space, I think I'd have a tegu. We have an Argentine black and white for adoption up front if you need to go home with a tegu today. I may need to. <laughs> I'm not going to. I wish. Is it an adult? He, he still has some growing to do. Okay. Yeah, from what I understand anyway, he's, he's a sub-adult. Tegu up for adoption at Snake Discovery, oh, you guys. Oh, the one for adoption? That's an adult, yeah. Oh, the one for adoption? This oh. one. Oh yeah, no, this one, yeah, this one is not. Yeah, so adult, so adult tegu up for adoption at Snake Discovery. All right, I uh, just need to find a quiet spot to eat my lunch. I think, maybe. Let's just move on, shall we? Mexican beaded lizard. Definitely a, a lizard on my wish list. They're venomous, 
they're not going to kill you, but I asked a breeder, uh, I think the only breeder on the West Coast that, that breeds them and has a bunch of them, I asked him what it feels like because he's been bit by them. And he said, take a hammer and slam it down on your thumb as hard as you can. That's what it feels like. I don't recommend taking a hammer and slamming it down as hard as you can because that's a very painful uh, thing to do. Also, I don't recommend getting bit by a Mexican beaded lizard. This is a spider. It is not on my wish list. I have no idea if Kent did anything good for that Adoption Island commercial, but I'm guessing Future Bob can probably edit something together. Let's take a look. Hi, I'm Kent, spokesmodel for Adoption Island. Do you want a snake like this? And do you also want a lizard to live at your house? Great! This is the place where all the snakes and lizards are. Snake discovery? Come on by. Try a bearded dragon. Seriously. You know, in retrospect, I feel like that was a better idea in theory, but in practice, it just didn't hit the mark. And my apologies to the fine folks at Snake Discovery. You know, let's just forget about that and get back to looking at animals, shall we? This is Buck, the scaleless rat snake. And Emily tells me that this is one of the first generation of, of scaleless or somewhere in there from a long time ago. Uh, so it still has some scales. And I don't know if that's, maybe he just came out that way. Maybe it's because he was one of the first and then they just got even more scaleless. But he's got these little bumps and look at his head. His head scales, the front of his head scales look like spider eyes to me. But the thing is with a scaleless snake, they're super soft and they feel like velvet. But when they have a few scales left, it's like there's something about their, the feel of them that makes them, it's like a stress ball. It's like squeezing a stress ball, except I don't want to squeeze the snake, but just the feeling of it is so weird. So if you're ever at snake discovery and you get a chance to hold Buck, I mean, he lives in the back, but still. Do you guys get it, Buck, naked? Because he doesn't have scales. You get it. So I would say that snake discovery is not overrated. They are rated just right. We had an absolute blast here over the last couple days. I'm so grateful to Ed and Emily for inviting me. We had such a great time. I hope you're enjoying watching all the other videos from the other creators that participated in the build off. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next week. At snake discovery, oh hi bird. I just uh, caught this little bird. I am a Disney princess. What do you think of this? Anything of this? Oh, see you later. <laughs>